Last time on I'm Not a Musical Theater Guy. So I'm not a musical theater drummer. Me either, no. Yeah, right? <laughs> halfway ish through college that I was working pretty regularly. I am going to finish out the last month of the national tour of A Night with Janis Joplin. Love to talk to you again when you get back, kind of get a recap. Sure. Um, thank you so much for oh, like, th sitting Thanks down for having me in. I yeah, appreciate yeah. it. It's great. So cool. And now, our stunning conclusion. Matt. Jeremy. You're, you're back. I'm back. Why are, who are you and why are we interviewing you again? Uh, I'm Matt Dudek and I just got off my first national tour. Okay, uh, tell us about that. I just came off the tour of Janis Jop A Night with Janis Joplin. Mm -hmm. um, I was finishing out the final leg for another mm -hmm. great drummer yep. named John Rossi. Mm -hmm. um, uh, musical theater tour, right? Yep, musical theater tour, yep, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so I was just finishing out the, the final 30 days. There was okay. uh, 30 days essentially that were kind of added on to the end of the tour that mm -hmm. weren't that were rescheduled days mm -hmm. and so the other drummer who was originally committed to those days was had another tour that conflicted mm -hmm. so they needed someone to finish out the last little leg there and mm -hmm. i finally got my opportunity cool to be out on a tour yeah yeah uh how'd that go um overall it went well okay um, my first my first week and a half was scary okay i, just, I say that with a smile um uh -huh. It was a lot. Um, I, I came in feeling very well prepared, mm -hmm. and then I had a two-hour rehearsal before my first show, and uh -huh. I was scared as not even mm -hmm. the right petrified. Okay. Um, it, it just, I mean, switching out the drummer on a rock show where these guys have been together for a while was um, was intimidating. Some mm -hmm. amazing players that I really got to know, and some really great people. Mm -hmm. um, and they were no one ever gave any reason to feel anything other than welcoming. But uh, it just, it was, it was a lot to uh, mm -hmm. to switch that out. But. Okay. Uh, Kind of, kind of the job, you know. So I, I worked my way through it. I appreciate all the patience from the people around me that mm -hmm. kind of let me get my feet wet. So before we even get too much deeper, um, you were sending us some video blogs. I'd like to have you watch them and go through, and it kind of refreshes. It brings it back, and we can kind of talk about it. So. Good morning. It is a little after 5 a.m. on uh, 24th. And we are here at the airport through security and uh, getting ready to go hit this tour with uh, Janis Joplin. So uh, last night we got all packed. I said bye to my family, which was a little, little tough, but we're doing okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to head off to Chicago, Chicago to San Antonio, and uh, go meet everybody in the cast and start figuring out what this tour life's going to be. So um, I'll give you the goods, I'll give you the bads, and uh, we'll go from there. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope I enjoy this. We'll see. All right, talk to everybody soon. Come on, come on, come on. Hey there, everybody. Um, greetings from Amarillo, Texas. Take Life's been pretty crazy on the road for me. I just finished my third show of A Night with Janis Joplin tonight. Since I last talked to you guys, so I flew into San Antonio. Um, I watched the show that night. Uh, just from an audience perspective. The next night I watched from right next to the drummer but off stage. And then the third night was my first show. We were in Dallas, Texas. It was scary as hell. I had two hours of rehearsal. Um, we ran the first act. We had a couple spots in the second act. And then I grabbed dinner and we did a show. Um, it went okay. Um, it, it went okay. It wasn't a lot of time to prepare. Um, as far as with everybody. This show has been together for a while now. A lot of these guys have been playing together. Um, and it's a, it's Janis Joplin. It's it's a rock show. So to add the drummer in mid-tour like this is, I feel like, a lot. Maybe not. I don't have a lot of other experience to draw on, but it's tough. Like I said, I've now completed three nights. Um, I'm starting to feel better. Every night's been getting better, which is, you know, what we're going for. Um, nothing catastrophic. Nothing. Nothing is train wrecked at any point. That's that's a positive because I'm playing for real audiences while doing this. So, great band to work with. These guys are supportive, which I appreciate. The whole cast is. Um, everybody on this tour is really, really, really supportive. It's tough, but it's going all right. Um, feeling better every day. Um, shout out to John Rossi, who was the uh, previous drummer and the music director. Uh, he's leaving the tour today for the other tour, which is why I was coming in. But it, it's going. It's going better every day. Um, I think I've said that a couple times, but uh, we're off tomorrow. Um, our next show is in two nights in Minnesota, and uh, go from there. So um, I'll talk to everybody soon. So.
that was right outside of her hometown. We played a show right outside her hometown. Okay. And there's um, it's like a golf port, whatever I forgot what it's called in Texas. It's like mm -hmm. the whole museum, but there's a section for okay. Janis Joplin, which was cool. kind of cool. And so like a whole cast and crew was there. There was newspapers. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole publicity type shoot, but it was kind of cool to see and like. That was right. the recreation of her car, um, mm -hmm. her actual hand-painted Mercedes, or uh -huh. it was an actual Mercedes, I don't remember, whatever right. the car was, uh -huh. uh, sold an auction like couple, like a year or two ago for tons of money. So that's right. a replica, but like, okay. but still yeah. really cool just to like kind of be in her hometown, yeah. like doing a show like right, absolutely within her like near yeah. her hometown even was really, really neat. Mm -hmm. You used the term it went okay twice. <laughs> <laughs> so I bet you if I went back and listened, I wouldn't love what I heard. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually had family that was there um, for my very first show in Dallas. They had no, one, they were like we wouldn't have known, which is right. you know. The thing I always have to remember is even the things that like I was angry about or that mm -hmm. didn't go the way they, they needed to, out from the audience perspective, mm -hmm. they had they had no idea. Right. You know, like I said, I, I mentioned here, um, nothing ever train wrecked. Right. Yeah. There was never a moment like, what's going on? Like, uh -huh. even though I probably felt like, what's going on? Right. Hey there, everybody. Today is Wednesday, uh, January 31st, I think. I can't tell you how many times I started a, a blog for you <laughs> and had no idea what day it was <laughs> and had to stop it, look at my phone and be like, what day is it? Okay, and then start it back over so I can okay. try to give you a time reference because I lost track of the day. Uh, I probably lost track of the day within two, three days, I, mm -hmm. especially by the time I was actually on stage. Mm -hmm. I lost yeah. track of it, which, you know, um, being, you know, Texas over, I was the I was always at least in central time, if not further. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, trying to keep up with my family got harder and harder, you know. Right. I'd have to call by four o'clock my time to try, you know, when I was uh -huh. in California so I could talk to my kids before bedtime at right. seven thirty, eight o'clock. Like, just <laughs> right. trying to, like, yeah. get stuff to line mm -hmm. up, you know, and, like, right. I'm, you know, if I had 5.30 sound check, like, that's 8.30, mm -hmm. our time, they're already asleep, like, having mm -hmm. to call before sound checks and things just to like right. check in and say hi to everybody and mm -hmm. I'm sure every day is just long but like how much did also that scheduling and that just like disorientation play into that it had to be extremely exhausting somewhat I mean part of it is I'm an old man 10 o'clock old <laughs> is late for me yeah. anyway and uh you know most shows that were either 7 30 8 o'clock start so mm -hmm. two hour two and a half hour show or t we're talking 10 10 30 by the time I come off stage I'm, I'm tapped out at that point the, mm -hmm. the the 2 a.m bar band days are long past <laughs> me at this point the hard thing was was kind of the the show was a lot of travel mm -hmm. and I knew that going in and again having done drum corps I was prepared for travel but it's been 10 years since I did drum corps too so I've, again I've got, I've gotten older um, and so what most days were were you know we were up 8 30 9 o'clock the bus is rolling so we would sleep overnight in whatever city the show was at mm -hmm. which is nice right but then jump on the bus that morning travel five six hours get in around two three o'clock maybe have an hour or two in that city you know get into the hotel relax for a bit mm -hmm. then have to get to the theater do a sound check have dinner do a show mm -hmm. and that was essentially that, that was a pretty typical schedule so it does start to wear but just a, a lot of it was just the bus travel um i am currently in fairfield iowa i've had a couple more shows since i last did a video things have been going better and better getting more confident show itself has just been going better just being real which is again what this is all about i had a really bad show tonight um personally there was a couple moments where I think I forgot how to drum, so that was really frustrating. Um, definitely some things I got to fix. That's unfortunately part of part of the gig, I guess. You try to hope that that doesn't happen, and you prepare and you fix things and make it sure nothing happened again. Since I last talked to you guys, we've been up to Mankato, Minnesota. I had a really, really great show there, so I was feeling really good getting into today. So again, that's probably why some of this feels a little extra frustrating. But yeah, so we played Iowa tonight. Uh, it was a small venue, which is kind of interesting, a little different. It's very intimate. Um, I had some family there, which was really great. Got to see them afterwards. Um, really appreciate having people come out and see us do this show. Things are things are going well. I'm getting comfortable every day. Like I said, um, I felt really good yesterday. Uh, feeling a little less good right now, but I know what happened. We just got to fix it. Just It can't happen on a show like this, but, you know, it'll get better. That is what it is. I will talk to everyone in a day or two. In that last one, you, you said, I feel like I forgot how to drum. Do you happen to remember what that was? I don't. Okay. Um, and that's, again, um, I, I mentioned I had family there. So, again, mm -hmm. it, I got to go out and talk with family after mm -hmm. that. Again, don't know the show, but, you know, mm -hmm. know the music a little bit, you know, whatever. And they're just so excited to see me, which is great. Right. But, like, they had no idea. Whatever whatever mm -hmm. was, um, you know, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember. But it was something that was bothering me, clearly. Mm -hmm. Probably bothered the rest of the band. It was something we probably had to fix. Mm -hmm. That's part of what we all do is, you know, we, we're going to put all of our work under a microscope and make sure that it's, mm -hmm. that it's right, and I, I, as we should. You know, I, hope, I think a lot of musicians can relate. Like, you, you, you know the material, you're playing it, but it's inconsistent. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's nothing left to do other than just do it over and over some more. Uh -huh. And I think that's kind of that, that point that I was at at that point. It was, gotcha. I could play anything well. Mm -hmm. I could play an entire show well, but then the next night it might not have. It was just inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Hey there, everybody. Tonight is February 6th. It's a Tuesday, I think. That sounds about right. Uh, it's been a couple days since I did a video, so I wanted to try to get an update going. The show's becoming a lot of fun. i um, starting to get locked in with everybody. Um, the past two shows have been really, really good. Uh, I definitely feel a lot better. Um, the band's starting to click. Um, honestly, I think a lot of it is uh, the band knows that I know my stuff now. You know, they're trusting me a little bit, which goes a long way. It's becoming less work and more enjoying. I am in Tucson, Arizona right now. So less than a week ago, we were in Mankato, Minnesota, and it was, you know, negative who knows how many degrees and snowing and all that. And uh, today it was 80 and sunny out. I like the warmth, so I'm pretty excited about that. Sorry, everybody that's, you know, back home in Michigan and everywhere else that's cold. Tomorrow morning, we leave for San Diego. With this show, we don't get to play the same venue um, multiple nights very often. Um, but we have two shows in San Diego, which I've never been to San Diego, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I have less than two weeks left of the tour. Everything's really kind of going according to the script. It was stressful when I got here. It uh, wasn't a lot of fun, but I've kept, continued to work hard. Um, the, the band has continued to work really well with me and help me out, which has been great. The cast crew, everybody's great. Um, so now two more weeks of, of playing a show and hopefully just continuing to get it tighter and tighter and, you know, consistency. So... Very excited to head into uh, California in the morning and uh, keep playing the show. Oh, uh, tonight in the audience was Michael Joplin, which is Janice's brother. Um, I guess he's seen the show before, so everyone else has kind of met him before, but I hadn't met him, so I got to meet him for talk for a second. We got a group group photo, but uh, kind of cool to play for uh, you know Janice's brother. So really nice guy. It was a, lot, a pleasure to meet him. So pretty cool. Talk to everybody soon. <laughs> A couple days before um, I left, my daughter, who's four, told me, you know, Daddy, I think you need to take my uh, stuffed animal, it's a baby hedgehog, on tour with you in case you get sad and lonely. Which, mm. that's just adorable anyway, <laughs> right. you know, so I was like, absolutely. So I, I took pictures of baby hedgehog with me, he was always in my backpack, he was everywhere. And um, at first everyone's kind of like, what? And then you hear the story yeah. and they're like, okay, that's adorable. Yeah. And everyone, you know, baby hedgehog was just part of the tour for mm -hmm. me. Um, but it was actually a really cool way to chronicle my like some of the venues mm -hmm. and keep up with where, where we were. Mm -hmm. Folks, today is uh, Wednesday, February 14th. It's Valentine's Day, still here. Um, here is somewhere in Washington. I think I'm in Spokane. That's where I am. I'm in Spokane, Washington right now, so up in the uh, northwest corner. Uh, I think last time I talked to you guys, I was in California, so we've just been kind of making our way up the uh, California coast. We played uh, Portland, Oregon the other day. Um, Portland was really cool. Um, we got to meet some of the original band from when they did this show on Broadway. Found out right before the show that the original drummer that knows this book was in the audience, so it took me about half of the first act to get that out of my head, but uh, it was a great show. Everyone's super complimentary. They were really cool guys. Uh, I got to enjoy a day in Portland, Oregon the next day. Uh, it's what we call a golden day where we didn't have to travel. We didn't have a show. We were just in one place for the entire day and got to relax. It was very needed. Um, everybody's getting kind of tired. Um, it's a lot of travel. It's, it's been a bit of a grind recently. Um, so that was really nice. Got to enjoy Voodoo Donut. Um, if you've ever seen that on Food Channel and all that, some delicious donuts. I haven't really done a video recently and that's actually just a good thing. Um, it's becoming a bit routine, um, which is good. I'm, shows are really solid now every night. It feels normal. We have another show, I think, in Washington still tomorrow again. We have a show in Beverly Hills. And then our final show is in Redding, California on uh, Sunday. Starting to wrap up a little bit, but you know, we gotta keep playing playing the show for everybody. Um, and it's it's been fun, great houses, great audiences. I'll probably do maybe one or two more videos before I uh, get home. So, hey, this has been fun, things are going well. Um, I'll talk to everybody soon.
figured I would do a quick video here, uh, hopefully you can hear me, um, one month later, right back where I started, um, I'm home, I'm back in Flint, uh, I'm going to go hopefully get my bags, we'll see if they made them, I will follow up uh, tomorrow, I'm going to try to do a video of my last couple days, but uh, yeah, just wanted to try to get a video right back where this all started, uh, I'll talk to everybody soon. Well, you know when you got it, if it makes you feel good. What one is expected and, and what was different? What was eye-opening? I always, I, when I've talked about it with people, I say it follow the script I, script I expected. Um, as far as I thought I prepared properly, I felt good going in. I was supposed to be off book and I felt like I've got the show like right where I want it to be. I got in and it just, it wasn't comfortable and I started checking my book more often. I got a lot of notes from the previous drummer and music director, John. They were all good notes, but it was trying to, you know, the, some things to think of to try to be more like him for the comfort level but I put those into my book and then all of a sudden I was attached to my book which I wasn't supposed to have you know right um, they, they let me have my iPad on stage which is where I keep my music mm -hmm. it was like hidden on my under my iPad no one could see it ever you know mm -hmm. like even people that knew it were, was there you couldn't yeah. see it but like I was deeper into it than I wanted to be than they wanted me to be and that was frustrating mm -hmm. all around um, and but as I said, it kind of followed the script I expected. Not that I wanted to be attached to that, mm -hmm. but as far as I felt good, and then I got my confidence shook, and it took me, you know, a while to to get that going again. But it's also what I, I I've seen it enough in, in other aspects, not with me, with me and with other people, that it was kind of what I expected to. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have to like it. No one had to like it, but right. it, but it kind of went as, as I mm -hmm. thought it would. You know, what are some of the details of that script in a, in a general sense for, for people that, that they should expect? I mean, just over-prepare. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe I thought I was over-prepared and I wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. I guess that's for me to decide how I... I it's I, kind of what everybody does. They, they prepare a lot and they, oh, I didn't prepare the things I thought I needed to prepare. Yeah, it's kind of like right. you took, you, you studied, you studied, uh -huh. you studied, you took the test and the test was on different things than you expect. You right. know, like, but that's, you know, I, I don't fault anybody. You know, I, I, I got good information from everybody getting in. I just... I thought I, I was ready, and maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, but it, it you know, is what it is. Well, I mean, do, do you think you were? I Getting in, I okay. did think I was. Okay. Apparently, I wasn't. Like, okay. I mean, just the way I got shook down, you know what okay. I mean? Um, but I, I thought I did everything that mm -hmm. I, the way I wanted to. You know, right. I, I prepared the best way I knew how I thought. Okay. Um, I guess. If, if you had to do it again, what would you change? Um, I think I would play more of because I had um, I was given some recordings from like a, a show like a week or two before I got on so mm -hmm. so I had like the recordings the you know? most recent yeah like yeah. from the board um, and I think I would have done less segments of show in more big picture. Mm -hmm. What kind of non-musical things did you do on tour to like keep yourself ready for the show? The nutrition thing's huge actually um, because we would like I mentioned earlier we would travel during the day mm -hmm. we have a lunch stop every day where it's fast food. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much that's your option. Yeah. And I mean, I am a, I'm a comfort eater. I will freely admit <laughs> that, you know. And so when I'm stressed out, I'm like, uh -huh. Taco Bell, this is great. Mm -hmm. After a couple of days, you're like, I don't want fast food. And mm -hmm. um, some of the other people on tour, I, would, I never thought of it, but they would um, have like coolers mm -hmm. and, you know, where I might go to whatever fast food stops nearby, mm -hmm. they would find like a Walmart or something and buy some groceries and try mm -hmm. to like keep some fresh food. And I was like, eh, that's really smart. Like mm -hmm. if I get the opportunity again, I'm, I think I would plan a little different that way that way i mean it's just you're you're spending money and you're you don't feel great because you're like i don't want fast food but <laughs> felt like the option and again as a comfort eater that was nice sometimes <laughs> like yeah panda express is what i want right now <laughs> being able to talk to people at home you know i mentioned i facetime with my family a lot which is nice you know it's tough being away for 30 days from from especially your kids you know and right so being able to facetime was really cool you know thanks technology for that mm -hmm. um when i was on the bus the first week and a half two weeks almost all the time I was listening to the show following like I never got away from it because right. I couldn't yet right you know and that was that was part of my job was you know what immerse yourself you know you're you're not immersed enough immerse yourself further mm -hmm. um, and I think once I was immersed everyone felt good about it and I could watch a movie on you know that I downloaded on Netflix or whatever mm -hmm. um, that was that was huge just being mm -hmm. able to kind of relax and get mm -hmm. away from it occasionally was <laughs> was needed right yeah how do you see this going forward was this a uh something that you did kind of once or is this the type of thing that you know if the opportunity shows up again are you I, I freely admit um, for a couple years now I've had a chip on my shoulder and I might have even talked about this where I wanted a tour so bad and I didn't need to prove it to anyone other than myself that yes mm -hmm. this is where I belong and I can do this mm -hmm. and so I've definitely gotten rid of that which is a good feeling like I, I don't feel like man I need to get right back out there mm -hmm. I would love to get back out there though mm -hmm. um, I, I felt good being out um, I would love to 
to grab a longer mm -hmm. tour you know now i've got the i've got the itch you know but right. at the same time it has to make sense um right. You know, some tours pay more, some tours pay less. You know, it's got to be the right circumstances for me to do it. I'm not just gonna drop everything to go lose money on the road. That's that. Right. That, that doesn't make any sense. No, and yeah. it's not not where I'm at in my life. Right. But yeah, I mean, the fact that I, I I had a wonderful person whose job was backline as part of, as part mm -hmm. of it. So like, I never had to move my own gear. Like, right. I've never had that in my life. Like, I'm used to. <laughs> uh, I had a prof We we had a professor in in mm -hmm. uh, college who um, taught. He he said something to the extent of. I play for free. I get paid to move my gear. In and <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's probably one of my favorite things I've taken from that professor. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And he's taught me a lot, but mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like playing right. is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Um, so not having to move gear all the time right. was, was definitely new. You know, that was cool. Mm -hmm. But like, I would love to get back out there if the right opportunity comes along. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, this business is all about, um, networking mm -hmm. and, um, you know, having the experience of a tour on my resume sh in theory should help me get others. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. We'll see, yeah. but uh, I would love to, to get back out on the road sometime. Cool. Well, I think it's a, a great place to wrap it up. Matt, thanks again for coming out. And hey, thanks for letting me talk at you. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate definitely. it. All right. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's hit it. That's it. Okay, cool. Uh,